We are going to study in three days basic blackness and basic forgery. In a sense, a different way of forging. And forging is a language. We speak with the hammer, the anvil, and the fire, and the tools, and we create forms. And every nation that lives on his soil for 2,000, 3,000 years created a different speech of blacksmith and different tools of blacksmith. You see here different hammers. You go to the to the left you see the Japanese forging hammer. This is the hammer that they forged the <coughs> famous sword with. You see <coughs> the hammer is octagon, is eight. The handle is very short, it's not in the middle, and it's very thin handle. This hammer I got from a Japanese world maker when I was teaching in Japan. Now the next one, you see the English ball pin hammer. They have different hammers. This is, again, you see the handle is not in the middle. The, you see the ball in the pin side and you see it is round in the other side and you don't see the handle, the handle is very long. The handles are also different, the size and the, 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 the cross cut of the handles is different. <clears throat> now you see, the next one, you see the French hammer. The French hammer is very, very interesting. You have this step going down, and the pin line is not in the center line of the hammer. And if I am going to work, and I try to work with the French hammer, and I turn it around and work with the pin, I always miss, because it's not in the center. It takes me one or three strikes to go and to, to miss, to, to, to aim to the place with the French hammer. You don't see also in the, in the picture that in the front it is narrow, in the back it is wide. It's a complete different structure of hammer. Now when the French work, they never miss. The last one you see the German hammer. Now the German hammer is, uh, is uh, you have a smaller one, from all the type of hammers you have a smaller one, a bigger one. And it's very interesting that in all of Germany, it's the same hammer. The hammer is the same. What differs is, is, the, is the handle. In the south of Germany, the handles are long. In the north of Germany, the handles are very short, but very short. Shorter than this one. So you see the difference between the tools is also in the anvils. If you take the English anvil, the London pattern anvil, and in England you have two types mainly. One, the London pattern anvil, and the Manchester pattern anvil, which are very, very much alike, you know, but different. Because in the Manchester they have two square holes, not one. And the steps here are different. And you ask yourself, why in this little England you have two types of envies? Because in London they say bus, butter and butt. And in Manchester they say bus, butter and butt. <laughs> they speak different. <laughs> different English, different language, different tools. In Italy, they have different envies. The Italian anvils, the round hole is here in the round beak, like the Gladiator and, and the other anvils that are produced here in the States that are a copy of the of the Italian anvils. Okay? You have the you have the the, the German anvils in the north, the German anvils in the south, you have the Austrian anvils, which are different <coughs> completely. 
So the, this, this base of the Austrian angle is going like this. Four steps or three steps going like this, straight, not round, not like this. And here you have two arcs like this. And this is a remnant of the architecture, of the Roman architecture, this base. Okay, so we see how, in, how history is influencing also the form of the tools and the form of the, of the envies. In Japan, they have a block of, of, uh, of steel that is a bit rounded here, here, a bit rounded here, here like this, and he's sitting like this, and he makes his walk. Completely different way. In Morocco, they put a, a hole in the floor. The angle is standing here, and he's going into the, the hole, he's standing like this. this the, the anvil is on the floor, but the, 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 the blacksmith is going into the hole. Mm. Why they do it like this? Because this is their culture. There is no question. It's like religious. You can ask somebody, why do you believe in God? Eh, okay, because this is a belief. Okay. And tradition is very, very strong. So if you're coming to an Englishman that is working with a hammer, with a very long handle, and you ask him why you need this long handle, and, and he will answer you because if you hold it here, you have more velocity, and we'll speak in a moment about velocity, and then you have a hard blow and you move more metal, which is right and correct for the first, second and third strike, because the problem afterwards is that you have to raise the hammer. And then what happened, you'll see that slowly, 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 all the English people are coming here, and the handle is here. So you tell the Englishman, cut it off, you don't need it. Ah, uh -uh, he will cut your head off, but not the handle. Okay? So it's very interesting how all these things became a type of a tradition for every nation. And even today, with the, with the uh, internet, with the computer, with the transform of information, people are still keeping the tradition. Okay? And this is my... To, my People are blaming me. There was an article written about me in Germany. The man that works against the tradition, me. Okay? Well, I don't work against the tradition. I am, I am criticizing tradition. Tradition is holding very beautiful things, but many mistakes. Today, we have different skills. We have more knowledge about our body. We have more knowledge about physics and mechanics and engineering and we can do everything better than it was done before. <clears throat> Once I gave the same lecture in England and a fellow came to me by the name of Smith, which is a very good friend of mine today, and he said, Mr. Hoffi, I am a son of a blacksmith, a grandson of a blacksmith a grand-grandson of the Maxis, seven generations. It's the first time for me to hear a lecture about the hammer. And he said, yes, you were born to the hammer of your father, and he was born to the hammer of his grandfather. And you never questioned it. a very simple question. Can we do it different? Can we do it easier? Can we do it better? Can we do it faster? Can we save energy? Can we save power? Can we protect our body? You never asked it. Because you saw that if it was good for your father and for your grandfather, it is good for you. But I am not coming from that. I am not coming from the tradition. This was my problem. I was thinking of every step and everything I had to do, how to do it better. Not good for me, better. Okay, so now let's speak about the hammer.
I call this hammer a balanced ergonomic hammer. And why it is important, why I call it like this. You see, this hammer, if you tilt it and you hammer, only when you come to over 45 degrees, it turns. You see, before 45 degrees, nothing happens. But if you go after 45 degrees, oh, it turns. Now, all the other hammers are narrow and long, and therefore they are not balanced. If you tilt them, what happens? To prevent this turning, you have to hold the hammer strong. And what happened? Because we are swinging the hammer in a day. A professional blacksmith, when he works a day, swings the hammer 25,000 times. If you give one, two in a second, calculate it. If you work only 15 minutes in an hour, in 10 hours of work, you have 30,000 times to swing the hammer. Now this is destroying the joint. Why? People tell you, hold the hammer out. Yeah. Why? Because otherwise you get this. I hold the hammer in different way. And there is another thing, we'll speak about it, is when you fold like this and you hold the hammer, you fold in this direction. And in this direction, the joint is having a limit. Okay? I hold the hammer like this, when the palm of the hand is parallel to the end. Not this way, this way. And then, in this way direction, there is no limit because the bones are not holding you, only the tendon. You know all these athletes in the Olympia, they can touch with the fingers here. They have no problem to do it because there is no limit on the bones. So if you do it this way, you never harm the joint. This is one thing. The other thing is, if you hold the hammer tight and you go down and you press with your power, you stop the hammer. Now, going down with the hammer is not a problem. God arranged the world this way that everything is falling down. And we have G and we have acceleration. We only add to it. The problem is when we are here down, we have to raise the hammer. This is the place we lose the power. Not going down, going up. So, the moment you hold the hammer tight and you press the hammer down, you stop the hammer and you have to raise the hammer from zero, from null. Oh, raise it up. And not only this, this is very long. And you know, Archimedes found out 3,000 years ago that when this is long, you work very hard. So how can I raise the hammer easier? Because I hold the hammer very light. I hold it like this. And the moment the hammer is going down, I aim it also. It's having a speed already. The hammer don't need me anymore. The moment the hammer is touching the iron, I let it go. You don't see it in my hand. <laughs> let it go. Then even though we are working with soft material, there is action always and reaction. So the hammer is jumping a bit. And I'm using this little jump to do this. Oh, to bring the hammer here. Now when I bring the hammer here, I'm shortening this distance and from here to raise the hammer is very easy. So even an old fart like me, sorry for the word, can work hours long without getting tired and without damaging my hand. Now, there is something very interesting. 
we get work, we move the metal by hitting the metal with the hammer. Newton found 300 years ago that the work we get is equal to the mass of the hammer multiplied by the velocity in square divided into two. That means the velocity in square is very important. The faster you can go with the hammer, you get work in square. If you can move a heavier hammer, you get much more work. Okay? Is this understood? Now, how can we get this velocity? We can get this velocity, we raise the hammer, okay? We raise the hammer and we go down with the hammer. Now, we are using all the joints, the shoulder joint, the elbow joint, the wrist joint. And by using all of them, not one, two, three, but all of them together, we accelerate the hammer. But holding the hammer this way, we have four joints, not three. Because when we raise the hammer, the hammer is also jumping in the hand. We have this. So we have one, two, three, four. And we get more speed, more velocity. And it is unbelievable how much it is more. And then you move more metal in one go. It's clear until here. Because this, if you learn this and you master this, this is enough for the class. Okay, this is the base of everything. Now, In Europe, there are places, and you'll see it also in the United States, that people are holding the hammer in a way like this with the thumb here. And this is the worst. Why? Because if you go down with the hammer and you hold the thumb here, you press with the thumb the hammer to the end. And you stop it. Zero. Now you have to raise it. You raise it against the press of the thumb here. So you are fighting the raising of the hammer with the thumb. This is one thing. The other thing is, and this is very important, we have here a nerve that is called A5. And the nerve is going all the way here to the neck here, to the spine here. Now if you go and you work like this, one year, two years, three years, after several years, sometimes after one year, you won't be able to move your head and you have pain here. Now, to go inverse with a car is a problem. But the biggest problem is when a young, beautiful girl is moving and you can't move your head, you're in a problem, you understand? So, Never put this thumb on the hammer because it disturbs you, okay? Now, and this is also very interesting. I have pictures and photos of American teachers that are teaching here and they show you how to hold the hammer here and how to make a point, and we'll go how to make a point, and they hold the hammer here, and they go up with the hammer like this. Okay? Now look at my body. Okay? You are like this, and then if we want to make a point, we have to put the hammer this way. Now we are working different. We are working like this, the iron is 90 degrees to the anvil, and if you want to make a point, we just tilt the hammer like this. And the hammer is all the time moving in the hand like this, between the fingers. 
we don't have to move the hand because we don't hold the hammer in the hand. We hold the hammer like this and we move the hammer between the fingers. If the hammer is balanced, you don't have to hold the hammer. We are guiding the hammer. There is philosophically, it's a big difference between holding the hammer and guiding the hammer. Okay? So now we move the hammer like this, and by tilting the hammer and using and leaning with the iron in the right places on the end, we move more metal and faster to use the heat it's only how to preserve the heat and how to create heat while forging because heat is a lot of money it's energy and time it takes time until we heat the metal we take it out, we put it on the anvil, the anvil is cold. Instantly it extracts the heat from. How can we do it in the right way to preserve the heat and to create heat while forging and to heat longer with the same heat? Okay? This is the art of electricity. Because you can put something in six, seven times in the fire, but you can do it in one heat. Hey, there's a big difference. So instead of working eight hours, you can work two hours and after go to the river and fish. Yeah, okay, enough. So we are standing like this. And there is another another thing that I saw very much in England and also in the States. You see many people that are, bit, are bent like this and they look, they are standing like this, they look on the work from this side and then what happens when you bend? You see, you can raise the hammer until here. You cannot go more. This is the highest place. You cannot go reverse because the bones don't let you go. Okay? So if you stand up, you can raise the hammer here. But if you bend a bit, you can raise the hammer here. If you bend a bit more, you can raise the hammer until here. And then what happens? Suddenly, instead of swinging the hammer, you pump the hammer like this. And you can see many people that are pumping the hammer. And you get no velocity with it. And you damage your body. You work like this, you put tension on your back and after several years you have backache problems. I stand like this and I look on the, on the steel from this side and I see the same. If you look from here or you look from here, you see the same. And then you have a free way to your hammer. You can use and extract your now, there are people that have problems with the eyesight. They lean because they need some glasses. Okay, if you wear black thing, wear the right glasses and look from the right direction. Don't look like this, okay? So you stand like this, the body is 45 degrees to the anvil, you raise the hammer and you go free, up and down, this way. Mainly, we raise the hammer until the head uh, level. Okay, so this is regarding how we stand towards the, uh, the end. Game. Now, John, let's start the next fight.
I teach I learn from the very beginning of my I started to teach the more I taught the more you learn and I'm always learning from my students they learn from me I learn from them and I said in Germany once that if a teacher is not learning from his students he's a bad teacher when the teacher says I know you know nothing uh -uh. He's a bad teacher because when you watch other people work, whatever they do, you learn all the time how to do good things and also how not to do bad things. It's also a learn how not to do, not only not how to do.
the, I, I, I can talk a lot about it, but I want to make it short because uh, our memorial will be with studying, not with talking, okay? We talk about the profession, but what I want to say that I cherish very much my memory of this end. And every phone call that we had together, we started, we love you, I love you, I love you, and ended with I love you, I love you. And uh, he, I miss him very much. And I don't know if you see, but I have now tears in my eyes when I speak. So, we are going to study for his memory, okay? This is why I am here.